Now that we understand some of the basics of laminating, we will use those techniques to construct a mold or tool that may be reused to create multiple finished parts. Unlike making the actual finished part, where precision and the overall weight and appearance are critical, with the tool, the primary goal is to achieve an excellent surface finish, good dimensional accuracy, and overall strength and durability to support the number of parts required. Let me stop here for a second and explain why we are laminating instead of casting. The first question we always ask when someone says they want to make a mold is what is the size of the model? For small models, we recommend mass casting because it is easier and faster. For large models, we recommend laminating in order to lower the overall weight and save on material cost. And for medium-sized models, there are some hybrid options to explore as well. Now let's get back to our demonstration. First, we applied and sanded several coats of sandable gray primer until we achieved the desired surface finish. We also constructed a support frame made of pine wood. This frame gives us an ending point for our tool, unlike an actual part where we would want to extend the laminate beyond the desired dimensions and then trim it later. The frame is as large as possible in order to maximize the flange or flat part around the model, which will be useful later when forming the part. We drew a line around the inside of the frame to provide an ending point for our resins. We don't want the laminate to protrude above the support frame, as this would require unnecessary trimming to create a flat back surface. Now it is time to cut and fit our pieces of fiberglass. To make the laminating process proceed quickly, we want to pre-fit all of the pieces of our fiberglass before mixing the resin. First, we connected the mold frame temporarily. We are going to use a combination of 6-inch, 4-inch, 3-inch, and 2-inch fiberglass tape. All of these tapes are a 10-ounce fiberglass with a plain weave. Fiberglass tapes are excellent for smaller jobs because they reduce the amount of cutting required and have bound edges to prevent the fabric from unraveling. For larger molds, obviously, the large rolls of cloth are ideal. We begin to fit each strip of fiberglass in our mold and mark where we want to cut it. Then, using a straight edge and a utility knife, we cut each piece as shown. Scissors also work well for cutting fiberglass. It is a matter of personal preference. Note that we are fitting our layers of fiberglass prior to applying our release agents. This is done to prevent us from disturbing our carefully applied release agents and thus requiring possible reapplication. Our goal, especially for the first layer, is uniform coverage with no overlapping joints. Although a tool doesn't need to be as precise as a finished part, the more carefully we fit our fiberglass, the easier it will be to build the mold. For the ends of our model, we use paper to trace the outline of the desired shape. Then we cut the shape with scissors, retrace, and cut this shape to create a cardboard template. This template can now be used to guide our utility knife when cutting the fiberglass. Next, we arrange some strips around the perimeter of our model in order to secure our tool to the mold frame. We use partial cuts in the fiberglass pieces in order to fit them around corners and other difficult contours. Finally, we cut small pieces to apply around the corners of the model to reinforce those areas. Now we're ready for cutting the second layer, which we build up at a 90 degree angle from our first layer. Orientation of the cloth isn't as important for a mold as it is for a part, but it is usually good practice to at least alternate the direction of the fiberglass with each layer. We're also using wider tape at the perimeter to overlap the underlying layers. It is not required to have the first layer underneath in order to fit the second layer, but we're doing it this way in order to help you better visualize the construction of this tool. We'll cut the pieces for our third and fourth layers identically to our first and second. Then, we'll remove all of the fiberglass and clean off the mold. Now we're ready to apply our mold release. We applied two coats of Freeman Wax Release, buffing the wax after each coat. Next, we pour our PVA mold release into a small cup and apply two coats over our model, allowing sufficient time for each coat to dry completely. 
15 minutes later, with our mold releases completely dry and our mold frame reattached, we're ready to apply our Freeman 705 epoxy surface coat with a cut brush. We start with the tool face first and then cover the rest of the model. We're also applying the surface coat to the mold frame up to about the line we had drawn earlier. Here is what the first application of the surface coat looks like when it is finished. Now we wait for the material to reach the almost tack free state before applying the second coat. For more information on identifying the almost tack free state, please see our other video on epoxy laminating basics. With our second surface coat reaching the almost tack free state, we're now ready to build our laminates. We do this by mixing our MIA 66 milled glass fiber into our Freeman 605 laminating resin and then applying this thickened mixture to the corners as shown. This creates a fillet in the corner and establishes a smoother contour for our fiberglass tape and prevents air voids between our laminate and surface coat. Now we're ready for the first coat of laminating resin, which we apply over the two layers of surface coat with a normal brush. Then we lay down the first layer of fiberglass tape that we had pre-fitted earlier. Using a cut brush, we work the resin up through the fiberglass until it is completely wetted out with the resin. We have to be careful not to be too aggressive with our brush because the surface coat layers underneath are not completely cured and therefore can still be disturbed if too much force is applied. Even though we mix smaller batches of laminating resin to extend the working time as much as we can, now is when we really appreciate the careful planning and cutting of all of the fiberglass earlier. Once the first layer is complete, we immediately begin laying our second layer, and then our third layer. For this mold, we stop the laminating process at three layers to show an easy technique to bond subsequent layers of fiberglass over a cured epoxy laminate. Here we are sprinkling our MIA 66 milled glass fiber over our laminating resin which is still wet, making sure to completely cover our entire tool. This process covers our mold with thousands of pieces of very fine fiberglass filaments that will create a mechanical bond to the next layer of laminate. Without this mechanical bond, the probability of a delamination between subsequent layers is very high. The next day, after the first three layers of laminate have completely solidified, we brush out the excess milled glass fiber. Then we apply another layer of laminating resin and then fiberglass tape. Because the underlying layers are hard, we don't have to worry about disturbing the integrity of the layers underneath. When completed, we again sprinkle milled glass fiber, but this time only over the areas where the support bars will need to be bonded. The next day, our fourth and final layer of fiberglass and resin has cured. Now is the time to install the support bar. We do this because of the large expanse lengthwise where the tool is only connected to the mold frame on the perimeter. By adding support bars across our frame, we add significant strength, rigidity, and stability to the tool without adding much weight or cost. Since we want the backside of our mold to remain flat, we want to install the support bars just below the surface. Also, we want to make sure that the support bars are not touching the laminates to prevent possible print through over time. To bond the support bars, we could use a filler material such as tough fill, but since the gaps are narrow, we've chosen to use Freeman wood glue. Notice how we have cut notches on the ends of our support bars to accommodate the fiberglass on the mold frame. After allowing the glue to cure for about 15 minutes, we apply small wire brads to further strengthen the bond. Next, we secure the support bars to our mold frame and our mold with more fiberglass tape and laminating resin. We apply short pieces on the ends and longer strips along the length of the support bars to attach to the underside of the mold. We are also taking this opportunity to show an alternative method for wetting out our fiberglass tape. We lay out our strip over a plastic covered surface. Then, using the cut brush, we wet out the fiberglass, 
flip it over, and then apply it to our tool. Although not ideal for the first layer, since you need sufficient resin underneath to be drawn up through the fiberglass, this process does speed up the application of additional layers, as we're doing here for our second and third layers of fiberglass. Here is our completed mold, with the bracing completed. The next day, we remove the mold frame, and then use our wedges to slowly remove the mold from our model. Because of the careful application of mold releases, demolding is not difficult. Here we can clearly see the green color of the PVA mold release, which we remove with several damp cloths and then allow to dry. The mold is now ready for use in creating fiberglass parts, Kevlar parts, or carbon fiber parts, as we will demonstrate in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are released. This particular video is part of a much larger set of videos, originally released as a DVD, but now available in our extensive online video library, which you can view for free at freemanvideos.com.